waters of this land and back and by I'll see them far and long Sorry friend but I gotta ask you not to get no closer unless I can see your hands at all times look too clean to be one of us but you don't look like the company sent you neither all right come and share my fire spell don't linger these hills is full of ears don't think just cause you can't see no one that you're safe I'll give you cornbread. Don't be so sure of me neither. See anything exciting out there on the road? Mostly I just see dogs. You'd be popular at mealtime where I'm from. You keep a whole crew glued, I bet. What's freedom? When the community decides what it's worth, setting the value of things together? You mean, when you don't answer to nobody? Just ain't possible, my friend. I need a laugh. Know any good jokes? <laughs> you got some wit, stranger. Trust. Can I trust you? If I asked you how many widows were made when the number nine fell in, would you know? What year it was when they walked Samuels and his boys down to Big Sandy and done them like criminals? You heard the word of Mother Jones? If you can't answer these, I can't say much. Can you tell me something sad? Sometime you just want a story that goes with how the world already is. Damn, that one hurts. But it's a good hurt. The sorrow's one thing we all share. Oh, sure, I know sadness. Sometimes I get to thinking that just because you're right doesn't mean you ever get your rights. Times like that, I feel like all them cold flakes are just settling in me. Like I'm gonna become part of the mountain's guts, one way or another. Anyway, I need something to laugh about. Got any funny ones? A pretty funny one, you know that? Traps. Yeah. I tried to help dig us out. Now more like than not, I'm gonna be running forever. Keep thinking, I should get mad about it. Maybe there's only so mad a man can be for so long. Sometimes, fire follows the line all the way up into the hole and then whoosh, snuffs out. And there's the men with their eyes screwed shut, fingers in their ears, not knowing how to feel about the silence. Got any funny stories? Must have a couple. Oh boy, you watch out now or I'll start chuckling. <laughs> Travel? Well, next time you take a train, take a peek on up at its beating heart. It's black breath. It's just what a mining man looks like inside him. Coal dust, smoke, and fire. Morning. I gotta get going. Hit it up that way. Won't be specific. My safety and yours. If you wanna find me, then do it. Talk again about these things. Coal ain't got no country. Worker neither. Worker ain't Virginian, Christian, white, colored, Irish, Polish, nothing. A worker is a worker. We all gotta work. If you're one of them, if you think I sound red, you best come out and say so. Get it over with.
oblivious to your approach. Their eyes are shut. Their touch, where they hold hands, is gentle. They speak in low tones. One stifles a burst of laughter, but it brings a smile to their faces. Sorry, says the one who laughed. Don't be, another assures her. They don't look up. And we give thanks for those who have left us, who we wanted gone, for the skills to thrive without them, and for the companions who make the effort joyful. The voice of the youngest wavers. The woman to her left squeezes her hand. This is not a scene to intrude upon. We need a sixth, she told you, beckoning from the steps of a great dark mansion. And just like that, you found yourself sitting with strangers around a velvet draped table. Her voice is reedy and high, modulated by the tight collar of her Victorian dress. Join hands, everyone. Your host keeps her eyes closed as she beseeches the spirits of the dead. But everyone else around the table lets one lingering, awkward glance bounce around between them. You sense they're just about done humoring her when it happens. A deep, nasty thump beneath the table. The whole table starts to shake threatening to lift right off the ground. And then, the staid candle flames start flickering like mad, casting ghastly shadows on the walls. And then, a viciously cold wind cuts through the parlor like sharpened ice. The damned candles are dancing in midair around you now, singeing a hair here and there off the quaffed heads of these well-heeled guests. You notice your host across the table has her eyes open wider than they should go, a rivulet of blood dripping from her nose. When you come to your senses, sunrise has begun to creep in. The parlor is empty but for you and the woman in the old-fashioned dress who slumped dejectedly over the table. He didn't show up. All that sound and fury, and no sign of his spirit. Waters of this land, and by and by I'll see them far and long. When the night comes down, take me hand in hand. This will be my tale of a vagrant song. Yeah, this will be Excusez-moi. Beckoning you over, the woman shows you a letter, beautifully typeset on thick vellum. You're struck by the scent of... a fancy department store? She points on the parchment to the address. This address, you know? Her accent is very thick. You are dismayed to read the first paragraph. Lorem Ipsum Dolor Sit Amet and the address under the monogram in the letterhead 12345 Road Street Anytown USA The woman blinks hopefully leaning close over your shoulder Yes you know this place she asks Poor woman she's been tricked this place doesn't exist, you try to explain, as 
loud and slowly as possible. Of course she exists. The woman snorts, thumping a fist to her chest. You struggle to make yourself understood, but the poor woman whisks the letter away and stomps down the street. Ah well, c'est la vie. His smile lights up the room, or rather the cab of the locomotive. Folks gather round as he holds the pull cord. He's a showman through and through. You'll want to cover your ears now for this next part. Sure doesn't help much. The engineer pulls that chain and the whistle blasts inside your skull. He just smiles through it all. Man must be half deaf. A round of applause erupts from the small crowd. He passes out bubblegum to the shell-shocked kids, half of them in awe, half in tears. Remember now who gets you there on the advertised. Casey Jones. Everyone's all talk as they head back to their seats. That engineer sure is handsome. Gosh. And that whistle sounded just like a whippoorwill, didn't it? Ain't this the way to travel? A family of nine invites you into their home for a meal. Hogs roam free in the yard. They wallow in shady patches of cool mud, not paying any mind as you pass. During supper, the hard wind puts an awful burden on the walls. The glass dishes rumble on the table, but the mother seems calm. Can't butcher a hog in these parts without me, Ma, hollering for pig's feet. The mother raises up her shoulders into a stern posture. I teach my children to only fear the Lord. We don't have hanks, just me, Ma. You emerge from the underbrush and find yourself at the edge of a field. A farmhouse sits at the other end. Close by, large family is tending to the plants together. They pause and regard you, almost nervously. Hello there? The grandmother asks. The family is almost too nice to you. When you ask for water, 
They don't even let you walk to the pump by the house. A child runs back to the shed for a folding chair, and they serve you lemonade in a glass among the lettuce heads. Halfway through your glass, you notice someone moving furtively down by the house. The cuffs of his white shirt are stained red. The father sees your look and shifts to block your view. His eyes are bright and his teeth are bared in something like worry. How do you like your lemonade? His wife arrives with a bag full of sandwiches for you and the whole family ushers you back into the woods, waving, wishing you well. You take one look back over your shoulder. The man by the wall is gone. Faded shotgun houses sit in rows under the tall shadows of smokestacks. A worker in full uniform hollers from a porch. Hey, traveler, throw me inside. Got some literature here. As you shut the door, the man glances out the window and draws the shades. Landlord toss you out? Ha, <laughs> don't mind me, it's none of my business. He pries up a floorboard with a crowbar. You glance over the man's shoulder to see inside the compartment. Canned goods, a pile of leaflets, the wood stock of a rifle. He replaces the board and stands. He hands you a can of whole potatoes, then a leaflet which reads, No evictions, no fascists, no hunger. Headed back to the shop, but we'll have a Bible meet soon. Bible meet. If you don't know James 5.1 by heart, learn it. That's our favorite scripture. Evening there. You looking for a sermon or just a chat? Don't really matter, frankly. First thing I ever learned behind the pulpit is that every homily is just a conversation. Ain't as one-sided as you might think, either. Preachers ain't shepherds. They're cowboys. They gotta run with the flock, keep them directed without fencing them in. So how about you take a seat and guide us somewhere? Lately, my journey's been pretty ordinary. Just walking, church to church. What about you? Been on any adventures? You've got a pretty wild life, you know that? Home? Never had a home. Not the way y'all talk about it anyway. Pops and I had a little trailer for the summer he was wrestling in Atlanta. But otherwise, it was a new floor every week. You must have seen some pretty wild stuff on the road. What's the most exciting thing you've seen? I swear I ain't heard a story good as that in a long minute. Travel? Oh, I travel. Moving's in my blood. Pops traveled all over the wrestle. And even after I stepped out on my own, I kept moving. I've been everywhere. Chicago, New York, Atlanta, Houston, Los Angeles. I even, <laughs> Paris. I even been to Paris. I've been everywhere. Chicago, New York, Atlanta. You must have seen some pretty wild stuff on the road. What's the most exciting thing you've seen? You've got a pretty wild life, you know that? You ever notice how different folk think about the future in entirely different ways? Talk to a man up in Harlem, hat man, sells hats. And he's talking about quarters and fiscal years. Talk to one of them boys at the Shaw School, they start yapping about automation and aeroplanes. But when I talk to my auntie down in Macon, she can't see past her next payday. Some folks don't have the privilege of the future. Anyway, why don't you tell me a scary story? 
must have heard some good ones. Oh, you got me for a second with that one. Love? Well, I've had long, cold nights and hot ones too. Paris was. Well, the point is, I'm the same as anyone else. But nah, haven't settled down yet. Too busy with another sort of love. Hey, do you have any spooky campfire tales? Feels appropriate out here, right? Oh, you could rattle a congregation's bones, I bet. Freedom? I have it now. I hear it a lot. You give the best sermons I ever heard, Brother Jimmy. Why don't you become a pastor and start your own church? Well, I like the freedom. Jesus didn't preach to the Canaanites alone after all. So no, no church or temple or praise house for me. My congregation is America itself. Well, I gotta get moving on. I have sermon give in the morning, and the church is a long night of walking that way. Walk like you're blessed, child. Cause even if you ain't, that's the only way you'll find your holy self. It's a stout myrtle with bald branches. No relief from the sun out here. Leaves would help. Someone hadn't replaced them all with dusty glass bottles. You cool down in the shade. The breeze blows through the bottles, making a series of heavy, hollow sounds. You think about wind chimes and the smell of fresh pies on windowsills. The dense sound of many conversations cuts your nap short. There's no one around, not until you look up at the bottles. They're filled with bright blue orbs, and words echo from them. None seem to notice your presence. Can't get enough? Porcelain? Chrome? The rusty ones? Gotta turn those sleek faucets. Ever find me in a hardware store, I'm gonna haunt it till the cows come home. Laughter rumbles inside neighboring bottles. See 
The soldier sits in the dirt with his legs splayed out, like a child would sit. Beneath the tattered fabric of his antique uniform, several open wounds fester in the hot sun. Lend a hand, traveler? Well, it's a fed ambush. I'm the only survivor. He even killed the horses. Got him mad with what we pulled off in Lawrence. Lawrence the town, not the fella. Rounded up anyone old enough to hold a gun and burn the place down. A vague tension runs underneath the silence. You realize you can't see the soldier's hands. Say, stranger, where you from? Where you going, Yankee? A bowie knife flies past your head, so close the wind tickles your ear. It sticks in a tree with a solid thump that clears the squirrels and birds out of the branches. When you look back, the wounded soldier's nowhere to be found. Cause when that fairy man comes for to tally up my worth I won't leave much to find that can be found You've enjoyed a break on the beach, staring off the edge of the world, but the sun is starting to go down and the breeze is getting stronger. As you're about to stand, a man plonks down near you. He sits a polite distance off, but looks at you expectantly. He smiles weakly. I just got fired. First Spanish-American radio host in the state, and they fired me. They needed to make cuts, I get that, but I'm twice the... He trails off. I don't know what I'm going to tell my wife. I could try the docks, but there's already more men than jobs, and I could barely support the family on what they pay. He hangs his head. And my boy, I can't bring myself to tell him. I don't know what to do. He calms as the sun drops below the horizon. An expanse of darkness is ahead of you. Turning back to the lights of the city reminds you that the world hasn't gone away. After a long silence, he speaks. It's never going to get better, is it? It takes you a moment to notice his sobbing over the noise of the waves. I've got to tell them, haven't I? I'll go to the port in the morning and see if they'll take me. You can no longer make him out in the dark, but his hand touches your shoulder as he leaves. <laughs> 